Welcome to the Benzo Free Podcast, your home for an honest, straightforward, and personal discussion about anti anxiety drugs, their effects, and how to deal with dependence and withdrawal. Whether you have taken benzodiazepines, Z drugs, or any other tranquilizers, know someone who has, or you just want help dealing with chronic anxiety and insomnia, this is your podcast. I'm your host, D.E. Foster, author of the book, Benzo Free, The World of Anti-Anxiety Drugs and the Reality of Withdrawal. I'm so glad you joined us today. Please stick around and let me bend your ear for a few minutes. You just might feel a little better on the other side. Hello there, this is D, and welcome to episode 89 of the Benzo Free Podcast. Hmm, what to talk about? What to talk about? What to talk about? This is going to be a different episode. Every now and then I like to do that, as you may have noticed, to shake things up or do things differently. Most of the time I script out the majority of our podcast, or at least a little bit of it, or at least just a tiny bit of it. Occasionally I do ones on the road and it's, I'll compile, you know, thoughts that I had from broadcast from, um, my, my recordings from the road and I'll throw those together. But rarely do I ever just sit in the studio like I am now with zero script and just wing it. And I'm going to do that today just for something different. And honestly, partly because I'm a little behind on time. I am getting ready to drive off to Kansas City again on Friday. I still have trips out there to work with my parents. And um, it's one of those things, and there's the yums. So the yums are going to come too. Yes, I still have problems with those, but I'm working on that. I am working on that. But this one's going to be different because here's what I'm going to do, just to shake things up. First of all, I'm recording this without any notes of any kind. I don't know what I'm talking about. I know what, don't know what I'm going to bring up. Um, we might do some, some things from the mailbag or a story or something. I don't know as I start this out. And if I do, I will, you know, go read something from my computer as I do. I haven't prepped anything at this point, but except for reading a couple things here and there, if I do that, it is all just top of my head. Sometimes I think it's nice to do that and it's, um, become effective. I think an effective connection, just being a little more real, a little more raw, but that also means more errors because I'm also not going to edit this. So I'm just going to talk to you. This is going to be more of a live broadcast, even though you're not hearing this live because it's going on a recording, but it's just a live conversation, you know, with very little feedback from the other side, <laughs> which a lot of my conversations are. But I just wanted to talk with you and see how you're all doing today. So I'm sitting here in the basement and I just flicked off the air conditioner because that blower is down here in the basement with me and it's, you know, noise on the recorder. Not that you need to know this, but see, this is what happens when I don't plan it out. <laughs> but I just want to say hi and see how you're all doing. Sorry, it's been a bit since I've recorded another podcast. Last one we had out was the interview with Dr. Colin Bradley. I think that went really well. If you haven't checked that out, please go back and check it out. That's a two-part interview we just released. And I think it had a lot of really good information, especially insight from how Ireland and other UK countries, other British Isle countries, what, what is the real term? Is UK doesn't include Ireland mostly, but British Isles does, or I don't know, you know, Countries on the <laughs> section of land in the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> Those countries. <laughs> I know there's a term, but um, United Kingdom, I think, means almost everything, but not necessarily Ireland or Northern Ireland or something. And, oh, that shows you how much I don't know. And I know many of you listeners are um, from that area <laughs> and are probably cringing <laughs> at me trying to figure this out. But I am a... I'm American and I, as much as I love uh, the international and people from all different places, I am not as educated about those areas as I wish I was. Over here in the States, I do want to mention that um, we just had a category four hurricane slam into 
Louisiana and is now working its way up uh, through Kentucky, Tennessee, um, Mississippi, um, up, heading on its way up to New York and doing some, a lot of damage. And I know some of you out there, in fact, I have been texting with some of you, um, especially um, some of our, our good friends who have been in the path of that. And I just want you all to know that thinking of you, our prayers are with you. We hope you got through okay and that you can get your power back soon and can start to make repairs and and get life back on track. And if you're still on the path, please stay safe and be protected from this storm. It's a, it's a pretty nasty one. But um, just let you, let you know that I think all of our hearts are with you who are going through such a difficult struggle. So, And it might be a while till you can listen to this because if you don't have power or cell service, which I've been watching the feeds, a lot of that's down, it's going to be tough to listen to our podcast. So hopefully when you get this, you'll hear that message and realize that we've been thinking of you. Uh, one of the things coming up within benzodiazepines is um, been doing a lot of work with this benzodiazepine action work group that I'm here. In fact, that's one of the reasons why I've been so busy. The My family stuff in Kansas City is still busy, unfortunately, um, but so actually is the action work group. Um, we're doing so many good things, and I'm really excited about the progress we're making. And I just wanted to let you know that um, Sometimes when I'm not doing a podcast, it's not because I'm not doing benzo work. We are we had so many projects, and some of them I don't want to speak to yet because they're still coming out. And once they come out, I can talk to you about the process and what we did and everything like that. But so many things that we're working on um, that I think are really going to start to make a difference for people locally here in Colorado, but also nationally because most of these have a national focus and international focus eventually. Um, so these programs are coming coming out soon, and I'm really excited about them. So I, a lot of my time is spent on those meetings, on fundraising, on trying to get grants, on trying to just find ways to fund the work of making change for people who suffer from benzodiazepines. So that's my passion now. That's what I do, <laughs> as you probably know. Oh, see, this is me just rambling. Yes, back to the rambling D. That's what I do. Um, I am sitting here getting ready to do a few other things. In fact, this morning I had two meetings and that's why it took me a little bit to, you know, I could just do that. I can go off and ramble about my day. Like you really care. <laughs> and and I'm sure sometimes you do, but I have to admit, you probably don't care that I was in three meetings this morning and that I was, you know, working on this proposal for some funding from some funds and, and, you know, yeah. Trust me, I don't care about some of this stuff. I mean, I care about the results, but the work is not entertaining to hear about. So I'm going to try to focus back on benzos and see where we can go next. I've heard from a few of you lately regarding your withdrawal. And, you know, one of the things that hits me, hits my thought process sometimes is the, the hidden the hidden parts of benzo withdrawal, the things we don't talk about as much. I mean, we talk a lot about the anxiety. We talk a lot about the muscle pain and the disorientation and the ecstasia and, you know, the symptoms, the benzo belly, the symptoms on and on and on and the 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 skin problems and, you know, just all the things that we, we know we've experienced with this. And those 12 categories of symptoms that break out into over 100 different individual symptoms. We know there's a lot out there. And that's our focus a lot. And our focus is also on usually the doctors that didn't help us for so many of you. And, you know, not being able to get the support you need and, and anger and justified anger and fear and justified fear and hopelessness. And, and I get it. I get it. It's really hard to go through this. This is not something simple. In fact, that's, I think that's the hardest message for us to get out is not necessarily that long-term use of benzodiazepines can cause dependence and withdrawal. The message that's so hard to get out is the severity and the length of this. You know, other drugs cause withdrawal, but for so many of them, Withdrawal lasts a day or two, or at most a week. Few prescription medications out there cause withdrawal that for some people can take months or years. 
And that's the severity of this for some people. Again, many people, and this is for those of you who haven't started to withdraw, many people can come off of benzos with little or no complication. It's been seen. But for some of us, we have symptoms. And for a very small minority of us, we have protracted symptoms and severe symptoms. So, of course, most of those people in that latter category are the ones who listen to this podcast. So that's really the audience I reach out to most of the time because you're the ones that are in the most need. And I feel for you and I, I understand. But what we don't talk about are some of the, there's some little things that happen. And, and this is going to be interesting because, you know, I don't have a list in front of me. <laughs> it's a topic I thought about covering one point. But I don't have a list of the things I'm about to talk about because I didn't create one. Now, now one of the rules with this live recording, you know, live quote unquote recording, yes, I'm doing air quotes here in the studio. And since I'm not on video, you don't see it. Um, but I'm doing that is that I am allowed to pause it occasionally, okay? Because I don't want to just ramble about nothing and bore the hell out of you. <laughs> so um, if I can't think of something to say, I may pause it. But I'll probably let you know when I do that too so you know when it is. So, so if I can't think of something to talk about, I will pause it. I'll go to emails or I'll go to something else. But, but I do want to talk a little bit about this and that is the, the unknown sides. Um, you know, one of the unknown sides are we talk about are the benefits. There are some benefits to benzo withdrawal. It's an opportunity to change your life. And, and it's one that I took and I took that opportunity and I created a better life for myself. I think several of you out there have told me how you have done the same. And I think that's pretty amazing. It, it is an opportunity. Uh, all problems, all, I I even the worst problems like withdrawal and like things like this do have a silver lining. There's that, there's that lining of, of what you can make out of it. And if I was going to encourage people to do anything, it's to take this time when, yes, you're sometimes debilitated, sometimes in chronic pain, sometimes can't focus so many things, the anxiety is so, so high, to work on things, to make your life better, to develop anxiety tools, to get some counseling, to try to deal with some problems, to to maybe find a new skill. I mean, if you're at home all the time and just can't go out and can't be around work and have agoraphobia or whatever, then, you know, learn the guitar, you know, something, you know, that you've been wanting to do for a long time. Going through my parents' house um, lately, as many of you know, I've shared with you my folks' situation. Um, but going through that house, I've taken some things and brought it back to the house. One of the things I brought back was my dad's guitar. Now, you know, you say that and it sounds like, oh, your dad was a musician. Um, no, he owned a guitar. <laughs> he loves music, but he never learned it. And I may never learn it either. But as a drummer, um, I am rarely ever, you know, asked to sit down and play a beat for somebody. It's just not something that happens. Drummers are probably the least of all musicians who are ever asked to perform for somebody solo. <laughs> we just don't do it. So it'd be nice to maybe have some melodic instrument, you know, outside of a little bit of xylophone and marimba that I learned years ago, where I could sit down and just play something and maybe even sing as bad as my voice is, but just, you know, learn a few chords, just a little bit of something. And, and those are the things that we can do. We can, you know, learn how to knit or needlepoint. We can, you know, spend more time with our pets or with our kids or with our parents. We can take advantage of the opportunities and be focused on those more than on the limitations. I think that's what I'm trying to say. So, you know, that's one of those hidden things here with Benzo withdrawal that, that we don't always think about. Um, you know, another one is as we start to get better, as I'm, I've been better for a long time, even though I've had some waves lately, and I still do right now. I'm in this wave that's kind of hit me for a while, and it's kind of knocked me down a little bit, but I'm getting through it. I'm getting through it. But it's it's those things hitting. It's, it's how important perception is and how we perceive and what we focus on. And, and, and keeping busy is one of those things that 
I don't think we talk about enough on the podcast, but that that was really important. I think it's important for so many people. Our minds in benzo withdrawal are chaotic. They are just chaotic. And they are, I, I often think of this heat-seeking missile, 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 yeah, missile, not missile, missile <laughs> visualization, which is, it's, you know, we you launch it out there and now it's just looking for a target. And it's looking for a target to destroy. And that's what our minds do, I think, in benzo withdrawal. We, for some reason, we've lost some of our control, some of our positivity, some of our ability to find the good in life. And our minds go out there and start looking for anything to pick apart, anything to tear down, anything to build up our negative attitude, our hopelessness. And our minds are really good at that, really good at that. You know, one of the reasons that it's so good at this is because we have lost our ability to some degree to calm ourselves. And that's that's a big part of this is that, as many of you know, benzodiazepines affect several different parts of the body. And we're still learning some of it, and, you know, primary um, nervous system, the peripheral nervous system, I mean, sorry, central nervous system, peripheral nervous system. <laughs> Slow down and speak slowly and they'll all get it. Okay. And we'll understand. Not only do these drugs affect our primary nervous, I mean, our central nervous system, see there I go again, but also our peripheral nervous system, even mitochondria and other different things that we have are learning along the way. But the primary focus that most of us know about and that most of the research has shown is our GABA receptors. And really quick, for those who don't remember, the GABA receptors basically receive the, the GABA, which GABA is a neurotransmitter. And it actually stands for, whoa, see, so you can do this without notes, gamma aminobutyric acid. Whoo, off the top of my head. I think I did okay there. <laughs> GABA. And that is a calming drug. It's like the opposite of glutamate. Glutamate in the system hypes you up. It revs you up. It gets you moving. GABA calms you down. And just to, um, so we all are on the same page here, we have receptors in our body that receive that message. Thus, we receive a calming message. When we take benzos, benzos wind up connecting to those GABA receptors. But over time, those receptors become less receptive because of so much of this inhibitory um, chemicals being released. So it calms you for a while, but over time the receptors decide, you know, through homeostasis that, hey, this is too much. I'm going to adapt to this. Okay. Hence we come up with the term neuroadaptation and they adapt to it. And, and then when the drugs are removed, or even if they continue to be used, but they don't have the effect they used to, now those receptors can't receive the calming message. And so that's what happens. So in, in benzo withdrawal, we don't have the ability to calm ourselves. The receptors are no longer able to receive as much of that message from GABA to say, hey, calm down. So what happens is we get in this loop and we wind up getting excited and we wind up then getting triggered by something else. And then we get triggered by something else. And, and we wind up becoming more fearful. And it builds and it builds. In, a normal, in our normal human physiology, that is then calmed down by our GABA response and other functions in our body. And, it's, and we have this calming mechanism that kicks in once that danger has passed. It's the whole fight or flight response. But when those... GABA receptors can't receive the calming message, we can't calm ourselves. Anyway, this was going somewhere. <laughs> but I think what I'm, what was I trying to say? See, this is that benefit point. This is that point where, you know, my benzo brain kicks in, of course, and I still say that and I shouldn't say that because I don't know if my cognitive problems that I still have, and I still have some, are benzo related or not. We just don't know. But it's one of those things that, see, and there I lost it again. Now I even lost where I was when I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I was talking about GABA. I was talking about calming. <laughs> see, this is fun. You know I'm going to get back there eventually. But without notes, I don't know where there was. <laughs> 
And this is what happens. This is one of the reasons why I script more often. But, you know, this is just fun. So let's just, you know, all to the wind and we'll figure this out. Backing up a little bit. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is that we don't have that ability to calm ourselves. And that's one of the things that we kind of you know, have to experience and realize what's happening and understand. And that's how we're different, is there is an actual physiological reason why we are getting so worked up. Why are we getting so much fear? Why are we getting these looping thoughts and these ruminations? We have a physiological limitation. We don't have the chemicals or are not receiving the chemicals, chemicals that, that cause us to calm down. And, you know, I'm still not back to the original point, but I think that was the second point. So I haven't backed up to all the way where I was. But I know our overall topic was about kind of the hidden things in benzo withdrawal, the things we don't talk about as much. And I think the physiology is one of them. And there was something else that led that to me. And this is where I just want to stop the recording and go back and look. But, you know, I'm not going to. I'm not going to because I ramble on. This is what this one's about. And it's okay. It's okay. But as I close that one out, that did trigger on something else I was going to talk about, which was something else <laughs> that I've already lost. <laughs> See, I haven't paused yet. I have not paused the recording yet. I'm just trying to keep going and do the best I can. What do we have so far? I have 21 minutes. This is the way you can know I haven't paused because I'm looking at my recorder. It says I'm at 21 minutes and 24 seconds. So if this recording, excluding, of course, the intro music that I will toss in there, is at 21 minutes and 32 seconds, and you know that this is me recording live and I didn't take any breaks. <laughs> I didn't pause or anything, but, but it does kind of continue on. But we were talking about the hidden parts, and this is, if you're wondering where we are in the podcast right now, this is introduction, feature, combined, I don't know where it is. But I'm going to talk a bit more, and then maybe I'll grab an email or two, and we'll just see where that takes us for a second. But we focus on the things that are affecting us most. And that's just human nature. Of course we do. And that's the pain, and that's the discomfort, and that's the loss that so many of us experience with benzo withdrawal. But like I said earlier, it's important also to try to remember some of the benefits of withdrawal and things, the, making the best out of this horrible situation that we can for those of us who are going through a horrible situation. Because there is another side. There is a wonderful side. There is a successful side where we wind up. And that's, you want to get there. Trust me. You want to get there because it's pretty damn amazing. It's pretty damn amazing. I see I see life differently now. I really do. And what's funny is as I just said that, I'm starting to get a little tear in my eye because this means so much to me now. I did have, speaking of mailbag, I did have somebody write to me just a little bit ago. Or actually, I think it was on YouTube. You know what? Let's just do this. We are going to pull up our YouTube channel live as I am talking to you and read a couple comments. And the one I'm looking to pull up is that. So here we go. Rather than go to, I have all um, all of your comments, almost every one of them saved in OneNote. I use this Microsoft application. I'm not, this is not a paid, <laughs> trust me, I have no, <laughs> no sponsored ads on this whatsoever. <laughs> I am not even nearly big enough for them to care about me. But, um, but I use a, an application called OneNote and I keep all track of all these things. But sometimes I just want to go back to the source and read them there. So I'm going to go back to our YouTube channel. So I'm bringing up, um, as you know, we have an easing anxiety and a benzo free YouTube channel, although I think I'm going to merge those back together again because maintaining the two of those don't quite make sense since we've had no easing anxiety things for a while. So all that might move back to the easing anxiety sign, but I promise I'll let you know when that happens and all the content will still be there. But let's pull up contents, comments off the benzo free channel. And let's go back down a little bit. And there was, I'm going to find this, I know. Aren't I going to find this? Anyway, there was somebody who on here who mentioned about um, feelings. You know, what? let's see if I can search for it. Yes, you're going to be part of this as we do it. 
feel. What is it? I, it just brings up one. That's not the one. Yeah. Here's one, um, and I can share these because since these are on YouTube, that means they're already automatically public, so I don't have to get permission on these. But Lucinda wrote a week ago, and she said, I'm experiencing intimacy again. It feels amazing. Even in my pain, human contact helps. Helps us heal. So many of us don't have anyone to even hold our hand. I didn't. Only a 15-minute hug every um, once every few months over three years. And I'm married. Um, she said that, like I said, I have a story. I'm still living. Please don't be afraid to touch us. We are still human beings. Needing life, needing love and affection. I have a story. Can you help me do it? Um, now, since I'm reading this live, I didn't prepare for it. But the gist of this uh, that I got from this, is this was actually commented on um, our Benzo podcast episode titled Relationships, Intimacy, and Sex and Benzo Withdrawal. It's one we did year, um, a couple years ago, but I've reposted on YouTube. So they're getting new comments now because I've been loading up some of our archive podcasts. But I, I love this one because one of the things we experience, and the reason why I suddenly thought about this, is those sense of feelings again. Many of us have been numb during Benzo Withdrawal, myself included. I had a rush of emotions coming in that had been numb for 12 years while I was on clonopin or clonazepam. Um, and it was intense. It is, can be very intense. And it's a lot of feelings. But like, like Lucinda said, even in my pain, human contact helps. She realizes she now needs that touch, which may not have realized you needed. It's just a normal standard human need but may not have realized she needed during benzo use. It wasn't until we kind of pulled them back and we, our emotions came back that we realized we need contact. And I think that's another factor that makes this so hard for so many people because like Lucinda and like others, we may not have the support system that we wish we had during this time. And now, for sometimes, the first time in many years, we crave that. We desperately want that connection. We desperately want that touch. We desperately want that hug. We, we want that sex. We want that intimacy. Whatever form it comes in, we're now craving it. And it's great to have that craving back. It's making us feel human again, but it also reminds us what we don't have. And that isolation, that loneliness that I sense from so many of you breaks my heart every time I look at it. I was blessed. And I will never say otherwise. <laughs> I was blessed. My wife stayed true, stayed with me, was my rock throughout my years of recovery, of, of healing from these benzodiazepines. But I also know I am in the minority. So many of you didn't have somebody like her with you. And I'm not saying it was easy. It wasn't easy on her. It wasn't easy on me. And it was not easy on our marriage. This has been hard. But we made it through. But I just want you to know that I get it. I understand the pain. I understand the want. I understand the craving. I understand the loneliness. Because even with her there, I still felt very isolated many times during my withdrawal. Because I didn't know that anybody truly understood me, including my wife, who went through it with me day by day, but she never truly understood what it was like to have this for so long, 24-7, 365, year after year. And it's something that I think is good for us to talk about, to discuss. It's one of those things we don't talk about too much, but that human beings are social beings. We are. This has been shown in study after study. It's just who we are. Yes, there are those of us who are hermits or who are more introverted or extreme introverted or have phobias regarding that and more isolated. But in general, all of us need and crave and desire and, and have to have human contact of some kind. And having that craving back is a good thing. But it also, like I said, 
you know, can show us what we're missing. So I think what I'm trying to say here to help people along is that if you're looking at starting benzo withdrawal, if you're looking at starting your taper, make sure your support system's there or do what you can to try to build a support system before you start. It's going to be very helpful for you to have that. Not just your doctor, your therapist, your massage therapist, your acupuncturist, your, um, oh, I'm trying to think of the name of the functional medicine doctor, whoever you find is the, find to be the team that you want to build. Oh, and there's my computer giving a little sound because it's open. So, <laughs> but to point to, ah, backing up, <laughs> but to know that this is important and that you're going to need this as you go along. So I just want to make sure that we all understand that, that you know, this is one of those pieces we don't talk about. And, you know, that was another good one is relationships and intimacy and even sex and benzo withdrawal. And it's one we probably should go back and revisit at some point because relationships do suffer in benzo withdrawal far too often. And maybe talking about it can help us avoid some of that. So we'll, we'll go back into that a little more. Okay. Let's see what else we got here. Any other comments on here that we want to go to? Uh, Graham wrote in, Hey Graham, uh, buddy Graham out of, um, the UK. See, I was talking about the UK, all those different areas, but he actually, I think is in England. Um, so I can say UK and I think I'm accurate, <laughs> but Graham, um, wrote just as good as part one, a must for benzo users worldwide. Excellent insights. He's referring to that conversation with Dr. Colin Bradley that we just did. So please check that out. Um, I really appreciate your feedback, Graham. Graham and I have written many times. Great guy. Um, love hearing from him. He's one of those people, and hopefully you don't mind me saying this, Graham, who are just completely honest with me. Even when I screw up, and that's what I love about Graham, is that he's not afraid to say, you know, that wasn't your best episode, <laughs> or, or maybe you should not say this too much or whatever. And um, I love getting the positive reinforcement, but my God, I need to be grounded just like everybody else. And I need to have the feedback of saying, hey, D, that one didn't work um, or that didn't work. And um, Graham is a great guy, becoming a really good friend. Hopefully once um, COVID and everything eases and stuff, I can get over there, he, whatever, we can start to we can start to see people. And I'm looking forward to that. Um, Pam also, and Pam Pam is one of those people that um, is one of my closest and dearest friends with the podcast. We've talked about Pam and Lee on this before, and she wrote regarding the episode, When the Rains Fall. And she said, recently, this is one of my favorite podcasts, Living in Fear. It truly is paralyzing at times. There is hope. It will get better. I love that comment, Pam. That is great. Um, I, I agree 1,000%. It is paralyzing. The fear is paralyzing and withdrawal. And we talked about the isolation a few minutes ago, and, and the fear is all part of that. And it just builds and builds and builds. But it does get better. Pam is one of those people that have seen it get better. She is a success story. She is doing better every day. So many of you out there, um, my buddy Steve from Iowa, who's one of the people on the Benzo Withdrawal, same thing. He's like, he still has some symptoms, but boy, he's living a good life with his family. And moving forward. And that is just amazing. And I'm just so happy to see that. And there's so many stories like that. And if I ever had a message to every one of you, that's it. Is that we do heal. We do recover. We do get better. This does pass. This does pass. Oh, wow. I guess I can't see. <laughs> this is probably why I do a podcast. I thought I might do a 20, 30 minute podcast and I am already at, where am I at? 33 minutes and 50 seconds. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to stop reading comments out of YouTube, but you know, that was fun just to pull that up and read some of the more recent comments that you all wrote to me. And I really appreciate that. Please, those comments, the emails you send me, the the um, messages you send to me on my feedback form at easinganxiety.com slash feedback are really helpful. And speaking of that, I just want to let you know that I have finally gotten back to start doing some work on the website again. Many of you know that I have been transitioning from our benzofree.org website to our easinganxiety.com website. But it has taken me about a year so far, so I'm still in that process. Due to my family situation and everything, I got sidetracked for a while. But... 
I am making that transition and I'm back trying to do more of that work and getting it over to easing anxiety. Podcast will still be called the Benzo Free Podcast. And I'm still trying to get out one episode about every two weeks is what I'm trying to do right now as best as I can. But that is moving over and will continue to move over to get back over onto the easing anxiety where I will have one website. And what's great about that is recording this podcast to you right now is easy. Even writing the script sometime isn't too bad, but there's a lot of this post work I have to do, and that really slows things down, especially posting these things on two separate websites, two different servers, to all kinds of different places, and it takes me a long time. And so the more I can simplify things, then the more podcasts I can do with less work, and that would be my goal. So that's what I'm trying to do here. So excuse me for one second. Mm. Hopefully you didn't hear that. <laughs> that was a belch and I tried to keep it quiet. So again, no edits. This is live. I'm just, I don't think I have ever done an entire podcast live. I guess I have done on easing anxiety channel or something. We've done a couple live, actually live streams. And so those were live unedited, but I've never done just a podcast for the Ben's Already podcast. I think entirely recorded live with no edits. And that's what we're doing today just for that. In fact, you know, I, I, I know we did wrap this up, but boy, I could just keep talking to you. See, this is, this is my therapy. This is my therapy. I love getting your emails. I really do. And your messages and your feedback and your comments, because it really feeds my soul and it reminds me why I'm doing this and who I'm doing this for. And we get to have conversations and talk about symptoms or hopes and dreams or relationships or whatever else you want to throw at me. And I love that. But uh, I've said this before, you all saved me. You have saved me. You've given me purpose in my life. Oh my God. I don't know if you understand this. I think many of you probably do, but how important purpose in somebody life is, somebody's life is. You know, I was doing database work for 25 plus years. I was doing screenwriting for 10 to 15 years and teaching screenwriting. I love teaching. That's probably one of my tops. And actually, one of the projects we're working on here is hopefully going to get me back to the teaching. And I think you'll be excited when you hear that, but I can't share too much right now. But this, this connection, this helping people who are in need, who are struggling, feeds my soul and your feedback, your friendship. So many of you have become friends of different, of different types. You know, some just emailing now and then, um, some emailing reg regularly. Some of you, I've even talked to on the phone a few times. I don't do that regularly because there's a lot of people reaching out. And most of the time I do, you know, say, hang on a little bit. Um, to be honest, the people who I talk to on the phone are ones who had probably emailed me for months. And we've developed a rapport and we've developed a relationship over time. And then finally, maybe that person or I have said, hey, by the way, do you want to text or do you want to chat? And, and we'll, we'll, we'll continue or something. They are very few and far be, between just because I just don't have the time. <laughs> um, but I love getting the emails and I love building that friendship and I love just continuing with that. And hopefully we can do more live chats and discussions and with the website as one of the goals is having this you know login type of system on the website where we can have discussion groups and we can have live chats and we can have all that stuff on on easing anxiety and i think that's gonna be pretty cool i think that's gonna be pretty cool so i'm just trying to say that you all saved me and for that i'm very very grateful and i want to thank you and before I become, as my voice just breaks their hand. Okay, that was good. And before I just get totally and completely carried away. And before the house upstairs gets too hot because I've had the air conditioning off now for what? What is the timer now? What is it? 39 minutes and five seconds. Um, I probably should wrap this up because I try to keep these under... Well, I was trying to keep it under 30 minutes, but we're going to try to keep this one under 45. I, I don't have a moment of peace right now for this. Um, but please, if you'd like to do your own, don't forget just to, you know what, just when this closes out, just take three deep breaths, just nice and slowly. And allow yourself to calm down for a minute. 
we, you know that you know the drill. Most of you have listened to us a few times. You know the drill. Take three deep breaths, and then just pause for about a minute. Listen to your breath or share your mantra, and just let things ease. Just quiet your mind for about a minute, and letting that chaos out there just kind of go away. That sounds pretty good, doesn't it? And maybe this is a good note for us to wrap things up on because there is peace in this world. There is calm in this world. Even if our bodies and minds seem more wrapped up in the, in the excitement and activity and fear, there is still peace and calm and rest. Sometimes we have to get out the pickaxe, pickaxe and the shovel just to try to dig down and find it. But it is there. You will find it. And sometimes meditation is a good way to do that. Sometimes yoga, sometimes breathing exercise, sometimes exercise, sometimes and on and on and on. There are a thousand techniques you can try. Find the ones that work for you. But find a way to pull away from the world for a bit each day. And allow yourself to just calm down. And maybe your body will calm a little bit in the process. I really hope to hear from you. Um, I am going to put in our disclaimer here in a minute just because I do need to put that in on each episode. And I do also want to say, which I should have said this up front, but this podcast is for informational purposes only and should never be considered medical advice. And, of course, the disclaimer says most of that anyway. This podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be considered medical advice in any way. The host of this podcast is not a medical professional, nor is he engaged in rendering medical, health, or psychological advice, nor any other kind of personal professional services. The views and opinions expressed by our listeners and interview guests on this podcast, whether read from textual submissions or presented in their own voice, do not necessarily reflect those of the Benzo Free Podcast or of its host. Withdrawal tapering or any other change in dosage of benzodiazepines, non-benzodiazepines, or any other prescription drugs should only be done under the direct supervision of a licensed physician. Our full disclaimer can be viewed on our website at bedsofree.org slash disclaimer. Please let me know. Comment on our YouTube videos. Let me know how things are going, what you're doing. Um, I'm, I'm only about a week behind on email, so I'm slowly catching up, and I'm going to answer some of those. Um, I'll be answering emails while I'm on my trip in Kansas City, so please. I still would love to hear from you. Comment on the YouTube um, comment on our podcast carriers, or just send us emails on our feedback form on easinganxiety.com or, or via email. I would love to hear from you. I, I'm with you all. We're going to get through this. Oh, there's my computer signal again. <laughs> I'm with you all. We're going to get through this. We are. We are going to get through this. I'm already getting through it, and I'm, I'm maybe a, further, a little further on than some of you. Maybe not for other ones, but this does get better. It really does. And we're all going to make it. I love you all. You take care. And take care of those around you. You need them. You do. Sometimes just letting the little things go so that somebody will stick around is worth it. Because we need each other. We need that connection. Keep calm. Keep calm. Keep palm is not how I normally end this. <laughs> Let me try that one more time. Keep calm, taper slowly, and take care of yourself. I'll see you next time.